Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So, for those of you who have watched a few of my videos in the past, you will already know that I really like towing things in this game, and I also like making vehicles that can tow. So this week, well, not necessarily this week, but today we're going to be doing... Now this idea comes from three separate people that I've sort of combined their ideas together to make into, well, whatever this is going to be. So the first one is, try to make a car with a huge engine but low horsepower. We're going for torque with this build, so it's going to be interesting. The next one, it says, I have a challenge for you. Try making a small heavy-duty truck that can pull 620 torques. I don't know what 620 torque means, but we're going to be going for a lot of torque, and we're going to be pulling some stuff with a small heavy-duty truck. And the main one is, do a tow truck with a giant i6 turbo engine and tow a semi-truck. And this is the main comment that I was interested in. I like these ideas. So I figured that we'd be going with a 1946 pickup body. Reason why? I don't know. I just kind of like it. I, I like the look of it. And for chassis, we're just going to be going for the classic, like, steel, steel, longitudinal. And then we'll go coils up front and leafs in the back. And that's as simple as it gets. Now, one thing you will notice is that it's 2010. That is just because I want to do like a really nice torquey i6. So we're going for an inline 6, cast iron block, nothing too crazy. Uh, but because we're going big, we're going big. And we are also going rear wheel drive as well. So we don't have to worry about size at all. This truck has a lot of space. Now one thing that we can do is sort of mess with the heads and the valves to kind of make it more, more of a modern thing. And instead of going push rods, I feel like we should go for an overhead cam. And we'll go for an aluminum head. It's not necessary, but it's just kind of like a little bit extra on there. So internals, uh, I think because we're going torque, I'm going to go forged and that should help us a lot. Like we should be able to get a good amount of power out of this, maybe like close to 600 horsepower, but I'm looking for those big torque figures. So that's why we've got like large displacement as well. Uh, when it comes to compression and cam profile, I'm thinking that we'll just... We'll just straight out of the gate lower the cam profile down just a bit because we want that low end performance. This thing is not going to be too, too fast. So we need the performance down low to like get up to speed with a trailer or something like that. In this case, maybe a semi truck and compression. We're just going to have to touch that later. So we need a turbo. Uh, it's going to be a single turbo. We are going to go ball bearing. We're, we'll go for a performance preset and we won't monkey with this stuff too, too much. But I think it's probably going to make around this much, so we'll turn up the intercooler just a little bit so that we can tune based on it. Uh, so we are going to go injection. We'll go multi-point um, single performance injection, I think, which is regular gas. And yikes, that is a pretty decently sized turbo on there. Can't complain too much about that. So I don't think that this is going to be revving too high, uh, but we'll have to adjust that later. Thankfully, we don't have any errors so far, which is good. Uh, we'll raise this up. I think it's probably going to need to be big. And just for the sake of our ears, let's go baffled. Uh, so it's knocking. That's not great. Just a little bit of a tweak on the low end. We should be able to get rid of that knock. Yeah, there we go. So we're up to... Oh, this is climbing. Oh, wow. Okay, so 570 horsepower and 877 newton meters of torque. That's pretty good for a start. I haven't even started to tweak it too much yet. So we don't care about fuel economy, so I'm thinking that we raise up the fuel mixture, and we should probably... I guess we could advance the timing as well. RPM limit isn't going to be a big deal. We can drop that down, and then everything is nice. Uh, inner cooler and turbine. Might need to mess with those. Lowering the turbine actually gives us a bit more power. I don't want to make this like a speed demon. We just need that torque. We're almost at a thousand. Oh, that, that would actually be a good goal. 1,000 newton meters of torque. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a lot easier than I thought. It's over 1,000 now. Turns out we just needed to have the turbine restrict just a little bit, and uh, we, we'd just be gaining more and more power. Okay, I don't want to go too, too crazy with this. I think that it probably is good enough. Wow, okay, 700 horsepower. This is more power than I thought that we'd be getting here. I don't want to make it too insane because we're probably going to end up having wheel spin issues. I think this is probably as, as good as it's going to get in a reasonable way. We don't need to go too crazy. Um, so just having... Oh, hold on. We need to raise that RPM limit. All right, Pistons and Conrads are starting to get unhappy, but that's a good number. 733 horsepower on a tow truck is nice, and also a 1,000 newton meters of torque. And, like, consider the fact that these internals are not amazing. And, like, the quality sliders are all low. I think this is a pretty decent engine overall. 
So let's go to the body. Now I want to do a pickup truck, but as you'll note from last time, when we change the color of the truck, the bed will stay red. So I don't know, I guess that's just the way the game is going these days. It needs some, it needs some more updates, but I think in order to help this truck not wheel spin, because it's going to be rear wheel drive, and I just don't, this season I just don't want to deal with cars that have wicked wheel spin. It's just not fun at all. So I'm going to widen those as much as possible, and I'm going to widen these two. Now thinking about it, originally my idea was to have like maybe 600 horsepower, and now that it's creeping up close to 8, this is probably going to be better than I thought it would be previously on the track and such, which is good for its uh, autoflux games potential. I still haven't decided how I'm going to choose cars from the ones that I make to go into that, by the way. We'll have to figure that out as we go. Okay, so paint. Now, one thing that's cool about this is the secondary body is just the running boards so you, and the, like, the steps. So you can just change the paint step or the paint of the steps. And you can also change the rest of it to be, oh, that is not steel, but you can change it to be whatever you want. And like I said, the bed will stay red regardless, so not much we can do there. So I think I'm going to go with a gold color with a steel rim color, which unfortunately clashes pretty hard with the red bed, but we can't do much until they fix that, so we'll just have to deal with it. Now I'm going to skip ahead quickly to drivetrain, so we're going to go rear-wheel drive, uh, and we'll just go advanced auto. I think that makes the most sense for us. You can see that big old turbo in there. That is a large turbo. And we got the exhaust plumbed up as well, which is good. But things are looking decent. Now, whenever I do one of these front ends, I'm always not sure what to do. And then it kind of turns out very awkward. Now, we can make this pretty much exactly the same as the trophy truck. But I just don't like the look of the front end of it. This is a classic truck. And I have no idea what the classic truck looks like from memory. So we're just going to have to wing it. So I've come to a point with it where I don't hate it. But I don't like it either, but I think we're just going to have to go with it because I think that's all that I really can do before I just start to ruin it. So yeah, that seems like a pretty decent front end. Now we need some tow truck accessories, things that make it more of a defined tow truck style. And it's not going to be four wheel drive, so we don't need that. But I was thinking that we could do some antennas. Now I have these really big ones, which I could just stick anywhere and they just like, well, that's a big antenna, but you can move it over to as I was discovering while messing with this earlier, you can put it behind the box. So we could just have an antenna there. We could have two, which is perfect. It almost looks like stacks, but it's just, just an antenna. Kind of makes sense. Okay, it does not make sense. I need to raise those up if I'm going to shrink them. So I've gone ahead and added a bunch of things, and I just got rid of the antennas because, well, it just didn't look good. So I figured that it wasn't worth it. But we definitely need this. This is a key detail here. We need a tow hitch, as it will be towing things. After all, it is a tow truck. Oh yeah, we totally need back lights as well. Did not think about that. So I was trying to get fancy with the back lights, and I think I might have created one of the worst looking <laughs> tail lights on this planet. Basically, they're just headlights, but colors change. They actually do work, but I can't seem to get it in a way that I like it. Goodness, I've spent so much time on this, but here we have like reasonable front end, kind of just like classic style, but with a little bit of crystal on it. And then we have, oh, um, okay. I have no idea what I've created. <laughs> this is just getting worse and worse. So I've decided that this is going to be ba made by the manufacturer Panther, returning from the previous season where they had the 3X12 that did not do so well. This is their newest attraction. Uh, this is their modern 2010 model called the Tree Turbo. Does that make sense? Not really but they haven't been known to name things well, so I figured that this was appropriate. And you'll also notice that they haven't updated their styling since 1946, even though it's 2010. But I think that's pretty much it for this. It's not amazing. It's actually really not good at all. I like the front, but the back is a little bit suspicious. Uh, but we're just going to have to leave it as is. The reason that it doesn't have a back bumper is because it doesn't work well with the trailer hitches, it just gets in the way, so I've decided to just not have one. Alright, so I'm continuing where we left off here with the drivetrain. I think we're going to go 4 speed. I, I know that, actually, let's go manual 4 speed. I think that that's just going to make more sense for us. Now, it can go up to 280 kilometers an hour, which is pretty fast for a small truck, and we also haven't adjusted the wheels at all. Um, I think we're going to go low on the spacing, maybe 30 and we're probably going to need a geared LSD as well, because otherwise it's going to spin like mad. Now, I'm just going to go semi-slicks. I know that's not realistic at all, but I know that we're going to be needing it. 
uh, and I am going to widen the tires as much as possible. I'm just I'm bracing for impact when it comes to the unfortunate wheel spin issues that this is very likely going to have. Uh, let's make the wheels bigger. Now, this is a 375. It almost looks like a dually, and I kind of like that. And I'm now realizing that I completely forgot to give it exhaust. Right, I think that's kind of cool. The exhaust kind of, like, you can see the muffler because it actually has one. So it comes out, goes to the side, and pretty much perfect. Okay, back here. So we need some big old wheels on there. They almost look like they're duallys, but they're not. And we're just going to have to pretend duallys don't exist in this game, but I would like a lot if they did. Now let's go three pistons on the front, and we'll just make those bigger as well. We need to be able to stop a load with this thing. Uh, we're also going to have to go down to two pistons here, probably crank that up. Maybe a little bit of this too. I'm feeling that this is going to have a hard time breaking. I do not know how much it weighs. It's probably not going to be too, too much, but it's also kind of it's just straight up steel, like it's not exactly light. Okay, interior, entertainment, don't need any of that. Uh, we'll go hydraulic and we won't go any traction aids. I mean, we could go, okay, we'll go ABS just to keep it a little bit more drivable. Now, when it comes to suspension, this is where things get interesting. I'm thinking that we go standard suspension, but we'll go adaptive. Oh, that is actually good. We've got 95% dri drivability and sportiness actually is fun premium, utility budget okay it doesn't really know what it is downforce isn't good it's pretty quick i think we're gonna have to adjust some things here because it's showing off some this car has severe issues with wheel spin <laughs> that's just unfortunate but i guess that's what you expect from anything made by the panther brand okay so if we go back to spacing you can see that it currently has an 87 percent wheel spin chance in uh, first gear and 94 in second gear which is quite a bit lower than some of the previous cars that we've made on here as i've been known to make some really bad wheel spin machines now one thing that we can do is maybe drop the top speed uh actually if we raise this like all the way up we wouldn't have wheel spin issues but we're never going to get to that so we'll just go up a little bit we'll just go up to 92 it's probably never going to make it there but it'll help us a little bit and then if we start to drop the spacing down oh one thing we can check is the weight currently it's at 1960 kilos which is actually pretty light the brodozer by example uh the new and improved one is 2600 kilos which is i mean that's heavy and it's got well it's got 100 less horsepower than this so this should be fast but it is only rear wheel drive so can't expect too too much from it in terms of performance if we can't get his power to the ground which is what i'm trying to get happening now all right i've spent some time with it and i think that the tree turbo is ready to go it's up to 2000 kilos and the wheel spin is well it's still an issue but it's a little bit less less of an issue than it was i'm not exactly sure how to make it better than it is currently uh, when it comes to that so we're just going to have to leave it as is for now and see how it goes so let's go take this thing to beam and we'll give it a test so a semi truck weighs 6596 kilos our beautiful creation weighs 2146 kilos in beam and a trailer full of hay weighs 7341 kilos so because we can't tow a semi because it just sim simply doesn't fit on any of the tow trailers i figured that we would tow this big trailer of hay instead because it actually weighs more now the interesting part is, this trailer has its own front axle, the thing isn't even on, so we don't have to worry too much about it bogging down our truck, it's more about the torque itself. So let's see what this thing will do. Alright, so we're taking off, a little bit of wheel spin, might want to keep it a little bit slower here. So oh no okay uh i see that the brakes may be an issue so if we hit it you can see that the wheel spin becomes an issue uh yeah the wheel spin is definitely an issue for this truck so it's all about that slow acceleration just easing into it and we can hopefully get this thing around in one revolution without okay well we just lost a third of the load but that's okay it just makes it a little bit easier for us yeah unfortunately it seems that panther just cannot make cars that are not wheel spin machines or well drivable for that matter okay you know what maybe we started off on the wrong foot the tree turbo can do a lot uh just driving by itself it's well um not good in terms of wheel spin just ignore that trailer over there uh, but let's just go out onto the streets and see what it'll do just as it is. Wow, that was some significant lag. So let's talk about things that I like. I really like 
how the back turned out. I know that it's kind of awkward, but without the writing there, it was just like, eh, not good. And now that it has writing, I'm pleasantly surprised that I actually kind of like it, especially with the exhaust. The front end, very classic looking. I like that as well. When it comes to power, uh, we have pretty much endless power. 700 is a lot. Uh, it is also very, very hard to control and it does pretty much constant burnouts, as you would suspect. Handling wise, it's set for a utility preset. I didn't actually monkey with the handling on it at all, so it's not great. <laughs> we'll find that out later. And it seems that Beam is having trouble with the trees over here, so I think I'm gonna migrate to a, an area with less trees. Just kind of like the opposite of what migration actually is for. Yeah, so overall, it's it's kind of okay. It's just not as good as I would have liked as with most of the vehicles I make. Um, I have big aspirations for these, but they never seem to turn out quite as I would hope. I do like the stance at the back, though. It looks like a drag car, but it's really obviously not. So let's go tow some things. Right, so this being a tow truck, you wouldn't normally expect it to be towing a camping trailer, but, well... I figured why not? We may as well just tow some stuff. This one isn't particularly heavy, but it's still going to be a challenge, I fear. Especially with the wheel spin issues. Just kind of have to keep it under control. Now the torque in this truck is nuts. It's got so much torque that it's spinning the wheels at pretty much all times as I have demonstrated. But it can pull a trailer from a like dead stop to regular speed without really even feeling like there is a trailer there. It's just great. I really like that. Now what I think this original idea was intending is to make it more like a diesel engine so that the RPMs would be really low, the torque would be high, and then the power would be low. But it seems like that it really isn't an option in automation. For one, they don't have diesels. And two, yeah, we need some of that power. Feels like I'm just driving a caravan at the moment, but so far we've been able to make it out alive. And cancel that. The caravan has tipped and is going for a tree. I guess the tree turbo is living up to its name. So the panther is notoriously hard to tow and I've just kind of given up on putting it onto this trailer properly. So we're just going to tow it as is and see how this goes. I'm anticipating it's not going to go too well but we'll just have to try it. So far so good. Um, this is the bag trailer if you're wondering. So I tried to make it as easy as possible for the panther but it just isn't given up. Wait, let me try it just one more time. Uh, as anticipated, it didn't go quite as well as I would have hoped. Maybe we can hook it up and try it again. Alright, that's- I'm gonna label that as a failure. The Panther has become one with the trailer. <laughs> I hope that this truck is not the same way in the future. Alright, so I guess it's time to talk about what kind of course we're going to be doing for this season. Last season we did an automation racetrack course. This time we're going to be doing the Hirochi Raceway the medium race circuit, and we're only going to be doing one lap. So the stakes are high, let's see what the Panther tree, tur tree Turbo can do with all of its wheel spin glory. Okay, so setting off in this truck, uh, the spacing is set quite low, so it doesn't really accelerate, but once you get moving, you really get moving. It's got a good top speed and just generally a fast little truck, and by little I mean big, because it's not exactly small. <laughs> Okay, there's the first accident. Yeah, uh, apparently you don't want to go over 50% throttle. As with all Panther vehicles, I have to be very conservative with it. You can see down there, the throttle is not creeping much over 50%, if at all. Uh, this track does get a little bit technical in some sections, so we're going to have to be careful. But for the most part, it's just like a long, uh, speed-oriented track. So we've got to keep our momentum going here. Alright, we're coming through the checkpoints pretty fast. Uh, just trying to be, oh, that's not conservative enough, I'm afraid, and we've lost a wheel. Okay, so far, so good on this lap. Nothing too insane has happened, which is great. Some reason, Beam is not happy today when it comes to frame rate, but okay, well, that was pretty bad there. I basically just completely let off the gas, so that's not a good way to do that corner. And it seems that we're pulling heavily to the left, so we're going to end up having to do this lap again anyways. Uh, yeah. So one thing to note is I'm still learning the track. I have gone through it a few times. I actually used the Bomero 3.0 to test this. And I, I did, I think I did four or five laps just to practice. But I'm having a lot of trouble with this truck. It's definitely not the easiest one to drive. I said to myself last season that I wasn't going to do the same thing that I did where I made a bunch of bad cars. But, oh man, it seems like that 
just didn't happen. Finally made it back here. I have been trying this quite a few times. Uh, I've been through this course a lot now with this truck, just having made little mistakes and kind of thrown me off course. One thing that I can say that's good about it is it's got really good brakes and a really bad driver. All right, no more mistakes around this corner. We finally made it around. There is a slight little bit of damage there, but that was just after a wall love tap, so no need to worry. Uh, I was beginning to think that I wouldn't be able to make it around that corner at all, but that's the reason we're doing one lap this time, because I want to be more aggressive around the track. And as I say that, I'm like the most conservative driver ever, but we're coming up to the finish and I really want to actually finish. So let's see what kind of time this truck can lay down here. And the first time on the board is a 141.015. That is pretty darn good. All right, so that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I know that this car isn't the greatest, but we will be moving on to some other ideas soon. Uh, I'm not going to just be making like super high horsepower vehicles, so don't worry. We're going to do some smaller stuff too. You have requested a lot of things, and I'm not going to be doing them as requests. Like I said, they're just ideas, so you have inspired me to make some smaller cars. So, I'll do more in a few days, and uh, I'll see you then.